Good morning. Happy Hump Day, everybody. Good morning to you. Good morning, Daniela. Hey, Sister Suzette. Hey, Eric. Good morning. Hey, Karina. Hey, Sister Cynthia. Good morning. Sister Lucy. Good morning. Good morning. I see your names, but I don't see any comments yet. So I don't know if it's Facebook or if you haven't said good morning, but I doubt that because you all typically do say something. But it's okay. We know fate, but at least I'm seeing that you're on. So happy hump day to you. Thank you so much for joining. As you are coming on, do me a favor. Click share and invite others to join us this morning. I'm still not seeing any comments yet, but it's okay. I'm going to keep rolling because I know you all are speaking to me. I just don't see anything. But anyway, I pray that you all are doing well this morning. I'm doing great. It is the middle of the week. Amen. Somebody say it's hump day. Um, God is good all the time, y'all. And all the time, he is good. He is faithful. The Bible tells us if he is faithful, guess what? Even when we are not faithful. So I just want to say that I am okay. Thank you, Era. I see the I see the hearts and the and the likes coming up. Because guess what? I still don't see any comments. And I know better. I know that you all are speaking to me. I don't know what's up with that. Let me see something here. Because I cannot see any comments. I may have to peek at my phone to see. Yeah, see, my phone is showing comments, but the computer that I'm on is not showing any comments. That is so weird. But okay. But all right. Thank you all for letting me know you're there. Oh, man. I can see comments, but I can't. That is just weird. Facebook is doing the most. Don't y'all just love Facebook, y'all? When it's on, it's on. When it's not, it's not. You know what I'm saying? So trying to see if I can join y'all to see the comments. Okay. So, wow, this is different. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep moving. Forgive me if I'm not responding to your comments because I legitimately cannot see the comments this morning. That is so weird. So, hey, so I just... Hey, Sister Donna, so I'm just going to, okay, wait a minute, let me see, nope, Sister Cindy joined, God bless you, thank you for joining, so look, I'm going to put a comment in there and see if that does something, let me see, let me see, I see me, I see me speaking to myself, but anyway, I ain't going to get caught up in that, right, because y'all know that's just, you know, that's just a distraction, somebody say distraction, I am not going to be distracted this morning, I'm going to stay the course, amen, and I know that y'all are sending me love. I know that you're there because I see the names on the screen, but I just can't see the comments. That is so weird. I don't like that, but okay, I'm going to keep it rolling. So remember to click share and guess what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pray and I'm just, we're going to set the atmosphere and maybe when I open my eyes after praying, I'll be able to see the comments. Amen. How about that? All right. So Father God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you God for your word. We thank you that your word is rich, that your word is alive, that your word is meaningful, that your word changes and transforms, that your word encourages, that your word uh, enlightens and inspires, and your word educates, and your word corrects, and realigns, and, and comforts, and confirms. Oh, we just love your word, because it does all of that, God. And Father God, you are all of that. We cannot do this thing called life without you. We need you in every area of our lives. We need you emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically. We need you in, in our finances. We need you in our relationships. We need you in our situations, God. And so today we just invite you to speak to us this morning. Speak. Let your word just come alive. Father God, let it just hit our hearts, the soil of our hearts, and be that seed that just flourishes, that just does exactly what you sent it out to do. So, Father God, we just speak accomplishment. Say that with me. We speak accomplishment over your word today. That it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. Let us be doers of the word and don't just hear it. Let it not tickle our ears, but let it really touch a place that allows us to self-evaluate and, and to, to be responsive. That's what I'm looking for. Father God, let us respond to your word accordingly. 
And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Oh, I still can't see your comments. But anyway, y'all, we're going to keep this thing moving. Yeah, when I look at my phone, my phone tells me that there are like 50 comments. So keep the comments going and encourage each other. Say what's up to each other. And I'm going to go back later and I'm sure I'll be able to see the comments. I just can't see them right now because you all know how I do. Typically, I'll speak to you all and I'll, you know, see your comments and respond to it. But yeah, Facebook is not showing me love this morning. Hey, I'm able to see it on the phone. So if you see me looking down, it's because I can see the comments on the phone. Okay, that's right. Okay, y'all are there. Okay, Coretta, you're, you're ready and excited. Okay, in the name of Jesus. Right, Sister Donna, no weapon form. We pressing forward. Okay, hey, Bridget, good morning. Hey, Coretta, amen, amen. Okay, so y'all are flowing with me. So this morning, y'all, somebody say this morning. Because we know the word of God is rich and alive and it speaks every single day. That it is, it's rhema, it's, it's personal, it's right there. Somebody say right there. Have you ever just needed a, a right now word from God and, and you turn on the TV or you, you, um, you know, or you open up your Bible? Or sometimes it's not even, you know, the other day, my husband and I, we were watching um, a famous talk show and, um, and as we were watching it toward the end, you know, and it's not Christian, um, toward the end, they said something. And when they said something, it stirred us in the spirit. It was like, oh, God was speaking. Right. And that person didn't even know that they were being used, but they were. And they spoke it and we received it in our spirit. And as a result, we prayed about some things and God was speaking. I'm just saying, y'all, the Bible tells us that God spoke through a donkey so he can speak. He can use anybody. He, Check this one out. Even somebody who's not a Christian, I'm just saying. So be careful that you do not, um, that you don't miss out on something God may have for you because you don't like the package that is wrapped in. Okay. So I'm not, that's not the message this morning, but that's for somebody that you are potentially judging the package and God is trying to get a message to you. Amen. That's right. He can speak through anything and anybody that he wants to. So this morning, we are going to be in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. If somebody would put that up in the chat for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. That's right, Sister Cheryl, he sure did use a donkey. And so Matthew 5, 23 through 24, and hear the word of God. This is so powerful. Father God, speak. Look, speak this morning, Holy Spirit. Come on, say that with me. Say, Holy Spirit, speak. We want him to speak this morning. And then give us ears to hear, right? Let us be able to receive what he says this morning. Thank you for putting that up there, Sister Suzette and Sister, um, Sister Era. Thank you so much. So Matthew 5, 23 and 24 it says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there, while you're there, remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. So if you are giving God a gift, you are blessing God, you're worshiping God, you're giving him a sacrifice of praise you as you are these things as unto the lord and while you are in the middle of your worship in the middle of your praise in the middle of your sacrifice in the middle of your acts of obedience you're in the middle of giving your gift whatever that gift is to god and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you leave your gift there leave it like, stop what you're doing. It says, first go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Here's what it says in the message translation. I love this translation. It says, this is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship, see, this really brings it right there, right? Because we can all relate to 
being in a place of worship. And when it says when it enter, when you enter the place of worship, it doesn't mean a physical place. So we're not talking about like when you go to church, because we should all have a place of worship every single day in in our personal in our home you understand your place of worship can be in your car but a lot of times for me i'm in the shower and i'm in deep worship y'all anybody ever have deep worship in your shower i'm just saying right so when it says when you are um in your place of worship it doesn't mean like a physical place it, it means when you are in a place in your heart in your mind and your soul of worship right and when you're in that place of worship and you're about to make that offering to God, you're offering up yourself, you're offering up your life, you're telling God, God, have your way, do what you wanna do. Don't we say that? Do you say that to God? I tell him that, I say, God, have your way in my life. Do what you wanna do. Father God, order my steps. We say all those things, right? But listen, God's gonna see if we are, if we're being honest. God's gonna see, he's gonna test us on that thing. We're in there going on and on, God, use me, do what you want to do. I want to be a vessel for you. God said, oh. he said, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. But as you're getting ready to worship and you're, you're having a time with God, it says that if you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, a friend, a, a brother, a sister, a mother, a, a, a wh whatever, right, has against you, abandon your offering leave immediately somebody say immediately immediately leave immediately go to this person and make things right and then come back and work things out with god i just want to talk to you this morning from the topic <laughs> make it right somebody say i need to make it right I need to make it right. Come on, I need, just, just go with me. Make it right, make it right. This is what God is speaking to us this morning. Make it right. For some of you, this is going to be dead on because there have been some wrong going on. And here, here is what we need to understand. <laughs> that we want things to go right between us and God, right? But for things to be right between us and God, Things also has to be right between us and other people. You understand? That's why the, the, the cross is both vertical and horizontal. The cross goes this way between us and God, and then it goes this way between us and people. And so God is saying, listen, I know you come to work it out with me, but I also need you to work it out with them. And whoever them is, is going to be different for all of us. But here's the deal. We cannot expect God, listen to what I'm saying to you this morning, we cannot expect God to bless our gift, our sacrifice, and we are not willing to make a sacrifice. I'm going to say that again. Listen to what I'm saying. We cannot expect God to bless our sacrifice, to bless our gift, and we are not willing to make a sacrifice. You understand what I'm saying? And notice this, this is this is you know this is that part right that can kind of trip some of us up. Um, he is a god of relationship error. Absolutely right. The scripture tells us. Notice it says that someone has something against you. Now listen, it doesn't mean it doesn't uh, release you if you're the one that has something against them. This is just talking about division in you know in in general but i like that it specifically highlights that they have something against you you know why because when it's them it's real easy for us to go what well, they need to come and they need to be the one to initiate a conversation they need to be the one to say hey we need to talk they need to be the one that that starts this thing off they need to be the one they need to be the one isn't it amazing that god is calling you and i to a place of humility and it has to do with what somebody else may have against us and come on we know when some folk listen you know i i trip out right when people act like uh you know when people want to act like nothing's changed but they've changed the way that they interact with you have changed 
the way that they 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 used to call you all the time now they don't they used to be liking all your stuff on facebook now they don't you know they used to be available now they're not and then they want to act like things are the same listen let's stop playing okay let's stop playing games things are not the same something has changed there's some sort of offense there is some sort of misunderstanding there is something that has crept in and so god is calling us to be sometimes we don't like to initiate Sometimes we like to sit back and wait for other people. But in this scripture, God is calling you and I to be the initiator. I know for some of us, this is not an easy thing to hear because we would rather sit back and let the other person who, you know, did us wrong, the other person who pulled away, the other person. But the, the scripture is calling us to humility, y'all. And it says, if you remember somebody else got an issue with you, got a problem with you, feel some type of way, it says, leave your gift there. And can I tell you something? This is what I've learned, y'all. Are y'all ready for this? Because this is just the tough truth. Somebody said, this is the tough truth. Are you ready for some tough truth? Because some of us, what we want to say is we want to say, well, God, you know, why don't they come do it? Why don't they? Listen, God speaks to the one who's listening. I'm going to say that again. God speaks to the one who is listening. That other person may not be listening. They may not be in tune. Their hearts may be hardened, but guess what? Yours isn't. You wake up every morning and you get before God and you say, Father God, show me anything. Isn't that what the scripture says? Show me anything in me that's not like you. And give me the courage, the strength, the ability to remove it, to let you remove it, right? And so if you are the one that have, has inclined your ears, if you are the one that, that's listening, if you are the one that's surrendering, if you come on, this is surrender and listening and obedience comes with a price. I mean, it just does. It means that sometimes you are the one that have to humble yourself. And so God says, listen, you're bringing your gift. They're bringing their gift, but they're bringing their gift and they just come into worship and they just asking me for stuff and they're not surrendering themselves. But you come in and you're surrendering yourself. You come in and you're opening your ears. You're coming in and you want to hear from me like for real, for real. You come in and you want to be that authentic vessel. You come in and you're telling me, speak, Lord. And so when I speak, you have to be able to receive what I'm telling you. Well, Sister Cheryl, I appreciate your, your, your question. Sister Cheryl says, what if they're not ready to accept it? We cannot control what other people do. We can only be obedient to what God is showing us. And so your role is to go and offer, listen, I have offered, and this is just straight up truth, and I'm just going to keep it real, and I'm not even going to say who, but I have offered an apology to a person that either did not accept it or did not render an apology back. Now, ugh, that really, that, that you know, that can mess with the ego, y'all. You understand what I'm saying? That, that can make you feel some type of way. That here it is, you humble yourself and you go to them and you ask for forgiveness or you say you want to straighten this thing out. And guess what? They're not on board. But listen, you need to be able to walk away free and clear knowing that you did what God told you to do. You got to give them to God. You understand what I'm saying? You got to just say, okay, God. I did what you asked me to do. Now I release them. It does feel like rejection, Sister Suzette. But here's the deal. We got to know that we're in, when you're walking in the will of God, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot uh, measure what God is doing according to how a person responds. You, you cannot decide whether this worked or didn't work based on what the other person, it works because God told you to do it. You just, you know, you got to release them. You got to give them over to God. God didn't say go and apologize and, and, and I'm, your apology is going to manipulate them. Your apology is going to control them. Your apology is going to convince them. No, God says, listen, you came to me and I'm looking to make things right between me and you. Did you catch that? God says, you come to me to give me a gift. You want me to bless your life. You want me to be in control. You want me to use you. I'm trying to make things right between you and me. 
Get out of the business of me and the other person. I'm going to say that again. Because sometimes we too nosy. We, we want to know, God, what you doing with them? And how you how you changing them, God? And how you speaking to them? To get, that's none of your business. None of your, none of your business. Stay in the business of what's going on between you and God. And so the Bible says they have something against you. Go and, and be reconciled right and and again i always say this to you all that i always ask god god what do you want me to learn what do you because listen no no situation comes across our path that has not had to first go across the desk of god do you get that because this is what brings me back to a, a place of like, you know, before I get totally frustrated and, and just like, just feel all discouraged, I say, okay, God, why did you allow it? Because it had to go by the desk of God and God had to stamp his approval on it before it even presented itself to me. So God, why did you allow me to be in this situation? What are you trying to teach me? Are you trying to teach me that even when a person is unlovable, that I'm still to extend grace and mercy? Hello, somebody, kind of like what Jesus did for me, that even when I was not a friend of God, that you still made your love available to me. I'm just saying, what is it that God is trying to teach us? Are you trying to remind me that there were times in my life that I didn't act right, but you didn't turn your back on me, God? Are you trying to remind, come on, what is it that God is trying to teach you and I in the midst of that tough situation? Am I talking to anybody? Am I talking to anybody this morning? Oh, but Sister Ann, you don't understand, man. That's really a blow to my ego. Get over it. Because Jesus had to put ego. He had to lay himself down and become uh, the sacrifice. He had to put himself aside. And we want to be like Jesus, don't we? This is real talk. So what can I learn from it? Why did God allow it, right? And let me say this to you as I, as I get ready to, to, to close this, because this is so powerful. I need you to catch this, what I'm about to say. Catch it, right? The word reconcile, it says, and be reconciled. Reconcile means to resolve or to settle. Somebody say that with me. Reconcile means to resolve or to settle. In other words, when we go, we're looking to resolve a situation. We're, we're, we're looking to settle something, right? And can I tell you that sometimes in settling a thing, in resolving a thing, we just have to agree to disagree. Come on, somebody. See, that's the thing. A lot of us think that reconciliation means that we both walk away just, you know, kumbaya and swinging hands and skipping in the fields because we both arrive at the same place. No, sometimes we just have to agree to disagree, but we do it lovingly. Somebody say lovingly. God's not looking for robot followers. He's not looking for uh, for um, programmed Christians, right? He's, he's looking. We can have our different opinions. We can have our different preferences. And we don't have to all be the same, but we just don't have to be nasty about it. Can somebody say, I don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be nasty. We can agree to disagree. Everything is not always going to be, everybody's not going to be like us. We're not going to be like everybody else. Sometimes we're just going to have to do it respectfully. So reconciliation doesn't mean that we're going to be totally in agreement in our ideas. You understand what I'm saying? But here's what it means. It means that we agree to put this thing behind us. Yo, bro, sis, I need to just settle this because when I go before God, I need me a clean conscience. When I go before God, I don't need this, this thing and this nagging thing like, oh, remember, you know, um, Sister Suzette got an issue with you and you didn't go resolve it and you, you need to go fix that. Or Sister Eris, you know, yeah, I don't need, when I go before God, I don't need to have that stuff on my mind. When I go before God, I need to be able to hear God say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Even though so-and-so did not receive it, even though they did not understand, even though, even though you did what I asked, Ask you to do well done now let's you and i commune now we 
can do this thing in spirit and in truth. We're being honest. We're being transparent. See, now that's what God is after. He's after what's going on between us and him. So reconciliation, it means to resolve or to settle. But can I tell you something? It doesn't always mean reconnect. Somebody say that. Reconciliation does not always mean reconnect. There are some situations that we just, we, we agree to put it behind us, but we can't be besties no more. We agree to put it behind us, but guess what? We are walking in two different directions. The Bible says, how can we, how can, you know, one be going to the left and one be going to the right, and yet... We said we're walking together. There are some people that we we might need to settle some differences. We might need to 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 settle the you know come into agreement that we really can't agree that this is where God is calling me to go. You're going in that direction, and as a result of that, we can reconcile the situation, but we cannot reconnect. Is this making sense for anybody today? That reconciliation does not always mean reconnection. And that's why some of us has a that's why some of us have a hard time doing the reconciliation thing. <laughs> that's right, Sister Liz, loving from a distance. That's why sometimes we have a hard time doing the reconciliation thing because we think that reconciliation means that we have to become close again, that we have to spend time with them, that we have to hang out with them. No, 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 no. Reconciliation is about getting your heart clear. You cannot walk with everybody, Sister Donna. We're not, we're not to walk with everybody. We're not to hang out with everybody. We're not to break bread with everybody. You understand? The Bible calls us to love each other. And like somebody said earlier, we can love people from a distance. God is not after your friendship. He's after your heart. You understand? See, you may not be able to have a friendship with them going forward, but he wants your heart to be clear about that relationship. He wants your heart to be open to what he is doing because it might be that once you go and you reconcile, you say, okay, well, listen, we, just, we, we see things two different ways. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not going to disrespect your decision. I don't, you know, please don't disrespect my decision. This is the direction that I'm going. I see that you're going in that direction. I still, you still believe this. I still believe that. And that's okay. But it, 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 it just means that we're going in two different directions. So when, when we, when we see that scripture, understand what, what God is after. What God is after is our obedience. What God is after is our surrender. What God is after is us having a clear conscience that we have done what he's told us to do, that we have listened. And when you're in the situation where you have done the reconciliation thing and you realize that the relationship, you know, cannot be restored and you cannot reconnect, bless them. Release them with a blessing. Don't walk away mad. Don't be all upset. Don't, don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Bless them. Release them. Speak the blessing of God over them. God, I release so-and-so. I bless them. Because I said, this is how I started, right? I said, God, why did you allow it? You know, sometimes God has to allow some things to break apart because we are just we just won't do what he's telling us to do. God is telling you to go this way. And because of a certain relationship, you, you still go in the direction you want. And so, yes, God will allow strife. He will allow division. He will allow whatever it is to get your attention for you to realize that, yeah, this is a relationship that has run its course. This is a relationship that is no longer, I, you know, I can't be close to this person anymore. Release them. Bless them in Jesus' name. You know why you need to bless them? So you can walk away from there with a clear conscience. So that now you can go back to the altar and you can resume your gift giving. You can resume your worship. You can resume your praise. You can resume your surrender. You understand what I'm saying? The reason God didn't say pick it up and take it with you, he said leave it there. You know what leave it there means? That you, I'll be right back. The reason you're leaving it there is because you have every intention on coming back. So you left it there. <clears throat> You're like, okay, God, hold up. All right, I'm I'm here with you, but yeah, there's something I need to go settle. I'm gonna leave my gift right here. Okay, I'm gonna go take care of it. But my gift is here because I'm coming back. 
I got to come back. I got to come back to this place of worship. I, I, I got to come back to be before you. I got to come back to commune with you because I need it. I need it every day in my life. I need it every hour in my life. I need, so God, I'm, 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 I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And so you leave it and you go, you handle your business and you come back and you continue to give your gift to God. But can I tell you something? God is going to be, a, God's going to have a hard time accepting your gift and your, and your heart and right. That's what happened with the brothers Cain and Abel. One brother, he gave a gift and his heart was right. It wasn't the gift that God rejected. It was the attitude of the gift. It was the, it, it, you understand, it, he, he wasn't giving his best. He was just giving God whatever. See, that's what we, we don't want to go into God's presence giving him whatever. You don't want to step into God's presence casually. You don't want to step into God's presence with unresolved stuff and you want God to just look at the fact that you're there, but don't really examine what's going on with your heart. No, 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 no. That's not how we want to step into the presence of God. We want to step into the presence of God with our heart wide open, listening. And guess what? If you're the one listening, then God might tell you something that is not going to be it's not going to be easy for your flesh to do, but if God speaks it, the Holy Spirit is there to give you the strength that you need to get her done. And, we're, and we need to be able to just lay our lives down, lay down our ego, pick up humility, and recognize we all need grace. We all need mercy. Amen. So I pray that this message encouraged inspired, and yes, even convicted some of us. I had to pray about this. Do I have anybody that either I have an issue with or I feel they have an issue with me and God, give me the strength. Give me the humility to go make this thing right because I don't want to be in God's presence trying to pretend like, you know, it's like the, it's like the elephant in the room. You know, you know that something needs to be fixed, but you go in before God and you want to pretend. No, God's not into pretending. He says, those who worship me is to worship me in spirit and in what? In truth. We want to go to God in truth. Amen. So I pray this message bless you this morning. Be encouraged. Don't take this as a harsh rebuke. Take it as a reminder. Take it as a loving correction, right? That God just wants everything to be right between him and us. Give that other person over to God. That's between them and God. That ain't none of your business. It's none of my business. That's between them and God. But what's important is what God is doing for us in him. Amen. I want to be able to go and give God my gift and my conscience be clear because I've done what he's asked me to do. I've been an obedient servant, and now I can be a willing and useful vet. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this loving reminder uh, that we all need your grace, that we all need your mercy. Yeah? Father God, you show me time and time again that sometimes even, you know, when, when we can make a mountain out of a molehill, that sometimes we allow things to just fester and now they become bigger than they really need to be, Father God. So just show us, God, any areas in our lives that, that we are not being obedient Show us any relationships that we need to go and just resolve things, settle things, make things right. Make things right according to our obedience to you. We're not trying to make things right in our own flesh, in our own power, in our own strength by trying to manipulate and control and, 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 and you know, chart the course of how things should look. But no, we're just doing our part and then God will step back and let you do your part. Help us to not be bitter, but become better because of our obedience to you. Father God, I pray now for those who are going to do what this word has said, that they are going to respond. I pray for their strength. And I also pray for the heart of those that they're going to be uh, um, you know, speaking with, calling, uh, texting, uh, approaching, having lunch with, whatever that is. I speak to those people's hearts that you will prepare their hearts to be able to receive and respond accordingly. But Father God, remind us that whether they do or don't, we ought to, we ought to be excited about the, our ability to come back and continue to give you our worship and give you our praise freely and with a clean heart and a clear conscience. So we thank you for this message this morning. I bless every person under the sound of my voice, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us the strength that we need to make things right. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty, beautiful, and precious name we pray. Amen.
and amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yep, just ask him to search our hearts. That's what we want. Amen. Well, I pray this message blessed you. Share it with others so that they will also be blessed and know that we just need to make it right. Uh, not make it right in our own power, but trusting the power of God to go before us and to give us the strength that we need. Amen. I love you all so much. And thank you. You're welcome, Sister Teresa. Thank you all for allowing me to speak into your lives every single day. And God willing, um, I will be with you tomorrow morning, same time, same channel. And maybe tomorrow morning, I'll actually be able to see your, your um, comments so I can respond. I love you all. Have a blessed day. And don't forget to share. Love you.